everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is part of a massively open online video style textbook for the introduction to statistics. To see all the chapters and get more information, check out mathandstatistics.com. This video is going to focus on normal probabilities and how to use the empirical rule to calculate things like percentages, areas under the curve, probabilities, and so on and so forth. Uh, the empirical rule is also sometimes called, and let me uh, give you the name here, sometimes called the 68959997 rule, and we'll see why that is in, uh, in just a moment. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about data and what it means for data to be normal data or normally distributed. Uh, because that's important, and if your data is not normally distributed, you can't use the empirical rule. So that's something that you can use when you know that your data is normally distributed. So what kind of data is normally distributed and how can you discover, determine that your data is in fact normally distributed? So a very, very good example of normally distributed data is the height of adult females. And this is because most adult females uh, are of a similar height. So they're all kind of clustered around the mean and a few are taller and a few are a little bit shorter and uh, even fewer are considered tall or short and then very very few are super tall or super short and so what happens is when you create a histogram of adult female height it ends up being bell shaped it ends up being symmetrical it has one mode or kind of one bump in the center the mean and the median and the mode of your data set are going to be very similar in value. And so these are all attributes of data that's normal. Uh, to learn more about other distributions of data, such as skewed or uniform, check out my other video on data distributions. So in this video, we're going to focus on data that's normal and what we can do with normal data using the empirical rule. So what the empirical rule tells us, and it's also called the 689599 rule, it's got some other uh, names as well, is that if we know that our data is normally distributed, and we know the mean of our data, and we know the standard deviation of our data, we can start estimating probabilities or percentages or area under this normal curve of where we expect most of our data to be. And that's really the key to using the empirical rule, is understanding that once you know your data is normally distributed, and if you know the mean of your data, which you can calculate, and if you know the standard deviation of your data, which you can calculate as well, you can fill this in and then make estimations about where your data is. And so let's do an immediate example here. Let's suppose that you're dealing again with adult female height. Let's suppose that the mean value in your data set is 65 inches. And that kind of makes sense because the average height for a female is about 5'5". Five five. And so that's about 65 inches. And let's say the standard deviation in your data set is about 2 inches. So what that tells us, because we know that female height is normally distributed, we expect to see most of the females that we were to sample or put in our data set to be close to the mean height, close to about 65 inches. Some are going to be a little taller, and they're going to be all in here. Some are going to be a little shorter, and they'll all be in here. The women that are a bit taller are going to be in this area. Women that are a bit shorter are going to be in this area. And then super tall women, not too many over here super short women, not too many over here, and so on. This goes on for infinity. But you'll notice that the height of the curve tells you the frequency of that value. So women who are between 63 inches, that's about 5'3", and 67 inches, that's about 5'7", that's going to be over 68% of our women. That's why this is so high. The height of this curve tells you how many females are in this spot. The whole area of this curve adds up to 100%. 100% of our women are somewhere on this curve. They're either, they're either this tall or this tall or this tall or that tall, but they're somewhere here. So what the empirical rule tells us is that approximately 68% 
of our women, because it's normally distributed, are somewhere between these two values. It also tells us that just over, just about 95% of our women are going to be between these two values. And you can visually see this because look at how much of this curve is taken up just by women of these heights, between 61 and 69 inches tall. Now let's look at a specific question type that you might see when dealing with or using the empirical rule to estimate percentages. So this question says, use the empirical rule to estimate the percentage of females who are between 61 and 67 inches. Now the only way that we can do this is to know the mean and the standard deviation. So there's actually three factors that you need to use the empirical rule. The first is you need to know that your data is normally distributed. The second is you need to know the mean. And the third is you need to know the deviation. That's why we were able to put 65 under the mean. And each deviation counts as two inches. So when I'm one deviation away, I'm two inches away. So that's 67. When I'm minus one deviation or shorter, I'm 63. When I'm two deviations shorter, I'm 61. And that's where these numbers come from. Each deviation is two inches. And so each time I deviate over by one standard deviation on my normal curve, it counts as two inches taller or two inches shorter, depending on the direction I'm going. So the question again says, estimate the percentage of females between 61 and 67 inches. Okay. Well. I know that 61 inches is four inches shorter than the average. It's two standard deviations away. That's why it's right here. I also know that 67 inches is two inches taller than the mean. Every two inches is one deviation, so I'm one over. So how many women, using the empirical rule, do I expect to be between 61 inches and 67 inches? All I need to do to answer that is to add up the percentages that the empirical rule tells me are in each one of these categories. The empirical rule tells me that between the mean and one deviation to the right, in, that, in this case that's 65 to 67, is about 34.1% of my people, my data. Between the mean and minus one standard deviations is also, because it's symmetrical, 34.1% of my In this range, between minus 1 and minus 2 is 13.6% of my data. Between plus 1 and plus 2 is also 13.6% of my data. And so by adding up the percentage estimates between 61 and 67, which is the sum of these three values, I can estimate that about 81.8% of the females in my data set are between 61 and 67 inches. That's still a very large percentage, and that's what we expect there. Now, the empirical rule lets you make all kinds of useful estimates. One of the things that's important to recognize right away is that because normally distributed data is symmetrical, you can always say that 50% of your data, 50% of the people in my data set have to be just shorter or at 65 inches. It's also true that the other half of the people are taller than 65 inches because 65 inches is the mean or the center or the middle or the average of my data set. Also, again, because my data is normally distributed, the empirical rule tells me that if I know the standard deviation of my own data set, which is two inches in this case, that if I go over by one deviation, which brings me from 65 to 67, because each deviation is two inches, that one deviation from the mean contains about 34% of my data. So about 34% of the people in my data set are between 65 and 67 inches tall. About 34% of the people in my data set are between 63 and 65 inches tall. About 13.6% of the people in my data are between 61 and 63 inches tall. And again, I know how to come up with these values because I know the mean of my data set that has to be given, or I have to calculate it, 
and I know the value of each deviation. In this case, it's two inches. So to get to the first deviation, I add two. To get to the next deviation, I add two again. And when I'm going to the left of the mean or smaller, I subtract. So I know that if somebody is over here, they're smaller, they're shorter. So that's going to be 63 inches. This person's two inches shorter still, 61 inches. So that's how I'm getting these values. Now what's really powerful about having normally distributed data and being able to use the empirical rule is that this rule will work for any data set in the world that's normally distributed. As long as you know the mean and the deviation, you can fill in these blue values here and then you can automatically use these percentages to answer questions like what percentage of my females are shorter than 65 inches? About half of them. What percentage of my females are taller than 65 inches? The other half. What percentage of my females are between 63 and 67 inches? About 68.2%. What percentage of my females are between 61 inches and 69 inches? About 95%. And so that's what the empirical rule allows you to do. Now let's take one more example. In this example, we're saying use the empirical rule to estimate the percentage of females who are above or taller than 67 inches. All right, so again, we know that the mean is 65, and we know that each standard deviation is actually a measure of two inches, because that's the deviation of our data set. So I know the mean 65, I know the first deviation is 67, up to 69, and so on. This question is asking for the percentage of women who are ab above or taller than 67 inches. So first I'm going to find 67 on my empirical chart here and I had to fill that in by using the mean and standard deviation that I know from my data set. But I know that above this area where this arrow is pointing, so 67 or above, is about 13.6% to get me to here. Then there's another 2.1% that are in this range. And then there's another fraction of a percentage that are here. So I could guesstimate that I have a little over 15.7% of my females are above 67 inches. But another more accurate way of calculating that is to recognize that I know that 50% of the women in this data set are definitely below 65. I also know that another 34.1% are in this range. So if I add 50% to 34.1%, I actually get 84.1% of the women are here. So it has to be true if 84.1% of the women are here, and I want to know how many are on the other side of that line. It's going to be 100%, which is everybody, minus 84.1%. And that's how you get a more accurate answer. So remember that this curve always represents 100% of your data set. So if you know that 50% are here, 50% have to be here. If you know that from this line all the way over, filling in all this space, is about 84.1%, then you know that from this line and all of this space here has to be 15.9%. So these are the things that you can do with the empirical rule. The empirical rule always gives you an estimate of the area under the curve or the percentages or the probabilities, however you want to, to word that. In our next video, we're going to look at using the Z table to actually get exact values rather than estimating them with the empirical rule. Thank you so much for joining me.